Hello everyone, my name is Moose Henderson. Today we're at Custer State Park, which is in southwest South Dakota. It's fairly near the Badlands and Mount Rushmore. It's also close to Wind Cave National Park and lots of other interesting features. Usually when we think of Custer State Park, we think of the wildlife and the wildlife that you'll see every day here include things like bison, prairie dogs, some mule deer, occasionally some white-tailed deer, pronghorned, and then there's the wildlife that you don't see quite as often but is still found in the area. And these include things like badgers, black-footed ferrets, bobcats, and a lot of birds, although this is not what anyone would term a bird mecca. The major reason folks come to Custer is for the wildlife. In fact, some people even refer to Custer as Little Yellowstone because of the diversity of wildlife and the abundance of wildlife. In addition to wildlife, there's also a lot of landscapes here. Your opportunity to photograph what I call animal scapes which is an animal along with a landscape. Usually the animal is prominent in the picture and the landscape forms the background. Also, there are a number of geologic features in the area that are certainly worthy of some very nice landscape type photography. And we're gonna check out some of those one of the highlights is a place called The Needles, which is just north of the park. Of course, there's also The Badlands, which is, oh, maybe 60, 70 miles to the east. And then on top of that, you have all of the roads and highways that cut through this particular landscape. And none of these roads can be traveled very quickly because there's a tremendous amount of switchbacks and also a lot of animals to contend with. It is not unusual at all to spend a fair amount of time in a bison jam as the bison tend to congregate in the plain area and the plains are usually pretty close to the roads and so it's not unusual to have the bison out in the middle of the road. Springtime which is the time that we are currently at Custer it is currently the end of May is the time of babies and some of the babies that you will see in abundance here include the bison and when the bison are young, they are known as red dogs because they tend to have a coat which is fairly red. Another attraction here are the donkeys or what is known as the burrows. These are not native to the park. They were left behind, uh, I believe back in the early 1900s, they were originally used to carry people up and down the Black Hills. And then when that tour stopped, the donkeys were left behind. I'm gonna need a good dust bath. The donkeys they are now wild and they're pretty popular here in the park because they are really semi-domesticated. They'll come up to the cars and beg for apples and carrots 
and a lot of the tourists to feed them. Uh, of course, like any wild animal, there is some risk of getting hurt, but by and large, these guys are really fun to be around. I tend to like the hairdos that they have, especially the young donkeys tend to have uh, hairdos which remind you of a bad haircut. Another group of animals that is quite abundant in the park, including Custer and Wind Cave, are the prairie dogs, and they tend to group together in large open areas of the plains in what is known as prairie dog towns. They dig burrows into the ground, and here you can see a prairie dog that is quite active on a very windy day, and he's trying to extend his burrow a little bit deeper into the ground. These burrows generally go down uh, seven to 10 feet into the ground. They'll go down into a tunnel to a central opening that will be kind of a lookout area, and then there'll be a deeper area, maybe seven or 10 feet down, which will be the sleeping area. Generally in a burrow will be a family of a male and a female and a number of babies. On occasion, they'll have more than one burrow and they'll go from burrow to burrow. These guys tend to be fun to watch. They have a lot of family type characteristics and they take care of each other. And we'll take a look at some of those photos. Okay, as we finish off this video, I'd like to take a drive up to the Needles and show you some of the landscape areas. I was not able to get any really good pictures in this area because we typically had some overcast conditions and poor light and things such as that, but you may have an opportunity to go up into this area and to get some good images. So I wanted to show it to you and also to show you some of the dramatic tunnels and whatnot that you will go through. So I hope you enjoy the last part of this video. I did take pictures other than just prairie dogs, but that's all that I've shown on this particular video because that was what I really enjoyed while I was there. In another video, we'll share some of the other images such as the burrows, the bison, and so on. So I hope you enjoy the rest of this video and enjoy the trip up to the needles and the view of some of these landscape items. If you would, please give us that thumbs up icon or that old like -aroo. Thank you so much for joining us and for viewing our, our recent trip to Custer State Park. Thank you so much.